So good afternoon, everyone. Both here at Lac St. Anne, there's very few of us here for this virtual uh, recording of Step 7 Healing Prayer, and all those who'll be watching this online. Uh, this virtual experience will replace what usually is about a three-hour ritual uh, in the evening at a regular Lexington pilgrimage. So we invite everybody at home, if you want to, to find a candle somewhere and maybe a match or a lighter to, to be able to light that candle so you can participate in the actual healing prayer itself. And it's going to be a very simple celebration. Um, and we begin the ritual with listening to an open song. So Rhonda is going to share with us uh, a, a hymn. So we gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with all of you here and online. And you know, for years, this event has been known, this prayer has been known as a sobriety pledge presided over for many years by the late Father Paul Hernu, known affectionately as Mushkwa, uh, when I became involved and based on my experience with addictions awareness and the 12-step program of Alcoholics Anonymous, I added a new emphasis from the program that has been so influential in our communities. I know when I first got to Beauval, the first day I arrived there as a new priest, there was an AA meeting that evening that I was invited to. And that new element is step seven, healing prayer. We humbly ask God to remove all our defects of, of character, and I've added by filling us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, with the permission of World Headquarters in, in New York. And so this gives participants an option to make a pledge, as usual, or to ask for healing prayer, or both. And so we turn to the Lord now for God's healing power to heal and renew us, and we pray. Lord, we come before you as your wounded people, through a lack of love, and perhaps even the experience of trauma in our lives. We have lost our faith in you, who alone are love, 
and turn to false gods that have not loved us, that have entrapped us and addicted us. Most of us during a regular pilgrimage have already prayed for physical healing with various places or in the lake as we even did today. Celebrated reconciliation, especially in the reconciliation room at the back of the shrine here, and received your forgiveness during this pilgrimage. And now we pray that you will grant us also the inner healing we need to lead lives of happy, free sobriety. This we ask of you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who has no addiction within him. Amen. And now we'll listen to a reading and a psalm response read by Gary Daniel. First reading, a reading from the book of Ezekiel. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clear water upon you and you shall be clean from all your unclean cleanliness and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove from your body the heart of a stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinance. Then you shall live in the land that I give to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm response. I will praise you, Lord, for you have healed me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have healed me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not leave my poles rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry for, your, for help, and you have healed me. I will, I will praise, praise you, Lord, Lord for you, you have, have healed me. me. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name, for his, for his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. I will, I will praise, praise you, Lord, Lord for, you for you have healed, healed me. me. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you have established me as a strong as a strong as a mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. I will praise, praise you, Lord, Lord for, for you, you have healed, healed me. me. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks. I will give you thanks to you forever. I will, I will praise, praise you, Lord, for you, for you have healed, healed me. me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After getting into a boat, and crossing the sea, Jesus came to his hometown. And just then, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. The Gospel of the Lord. So years ago, Carrie Landry wrote a hymn called Lay Your Hands, and one of the lines in that hymn is very significant. They will bring your forgiveness and healing, and that's significant. We come before God here, especially at a pilgrimage, in need of both forgiveness and healing. And Jesus, as the Messiah, had a twofold mission. He came to redeem and sanctify, to forgive and to heal, basically. 
And this is what the paralytic experienced. They bring a paralytic before Jesus, seeing his faith, he forgives him. <laughs> and of course, they accuse him of blasphemy. And then Jesus also heals him physically. He brings to this paralytic forgiveness and healing. I remember one time when I was going through a pretty tough time, and I remember praying with a gospel of a, of a leper, the leper who says to Jesus, Jesus, if you, if you want to, you can make me well. And Jesus says, I do want to. And he reaches out and touches the leper, and he's healed immediately. And you know, we are all like that leper. We all have our need of forgiveness and healing, and we need to come to him for both. And at Lac St. Anne, certainly we come here to receive forgiveness. I know one of the precious memories for me is spending time in the reconciliation room at the back here. And just people coming and burdening themselves and receiving forgiveness and new life. But we also need healing. And so a lot of people come and go into the lake and a lot of people pray for physical healing. But I think the healing that we really need is a, a deeper inner healing. A healing of our painful emotions like anger and resentment and bitterness. And a healing of our shortcomings, our defects of character, or what I would call our sinfulness, that which makes us sin. We need forgiveness for what we've done, but it's like weeding a garden. If you just cut the weeds off at the surface, the roots are still there, they're going to grow back. And now I root weed my garden every year, and it's pretty well weed free because I take them out by the roots. I love doing that with thistles especially. Uh, and we take them out by the roots and they don't grow back. Well, that's what our God wants to do to us. And you know, the 12-step program is tailor-made for that. Especially the center of the program, steps four to, to, uh, to nine. Steps four and five is I do a searching and fearless moral inventory. I look at my wrongdoing and, and then I, I admit to God and myself and another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. That's what happens in the reconciliation rooms. We, we go to confession. We unburden ourselves of our sin. And then steps eight and nine is you make a list of the people we'd harmed and then make amends to them all, except when to do so we'd injure them or others. And so there we receive more forgiveness. Now we receive it from the people we've hurt. Hopefully they can forgive us. And if they do, then there's reconciliation. And so we, in that program, steps four and five, steps eight and nine are all about experiencing forgiveness and being able to be reconciled, if that's at all possible. But the core of the program, step six and seven, you get ready to have God remove all your defects of character, that's step six, and then you humbly ask God to remove all our defects of character and fill us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's basically step seven. And that's about healing, where the Holy Spirit comes in, fills us with God's love, and little by little pushes out our defects of character. So it's really, the program is kind of like a hamburger. Steps one, two, and three is the top bun. That's just getting into the program. Steps 10, 11, 12, that's the bottom bun. That's living with the program. Daily moral inventory, daily prayer and meditation, and sharing our experience with others and practicing these principles. The meat of the program, it's like the three patties of a hamburger. Steps four and five is one patty. Six and seven, the core, the center, and eight and nine the bottom patty. And so it's kind of like a holy healing hamburger <laughs> that we're invited to, to feast on. Um, and it's, it's a program from which we don't really graduate. Why would we want to graduate from that program which gives us new life every day? We're, we're sort of fed by it as we nourish ourselves with the forgiveness and the healing that the program provides. And so now we're just gonna have some prayers of intercession. I'm gonna ask Gary to come back up again and to share those with us. So gathered in joyful hope, we offer our prayers to God who creates hearts to love and would say, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle and suffer from natural disasters such as fires, floods, and drought, that they may find the help they need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who struggle with addictions in their lives, and their families, that they may find new life through, God, through faith in God's love for them, <clears throat> fellowship with others, and awareness of their need for a Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the outcast and the, dawn, and the downtrodden, and for churches and families who offer them refuge and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the church 
and those who serve the church, and for all people who preach and practice the gospel of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For family members who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who, whose pain from the legacy of Indian residential schools has been triggered by the reality of unmarked graves, and for a renewed resolve to the process of healing, education, and reconciliation regarding this tragic history, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those pilgrim, pilgrims who are participating in this virtual pilgrimage at home, that God's consultation and healing may come to them wherever they are, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We take a moment to pray in our own hearts for our own personal needs. God, our creator, guardian of our homes and source of all blessings, you delight in the happiness of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for all your people and for the entire world. Fulfill our needs and guide our actions toward the building up of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And at this point in a regular pilgrimage, people would come up and light candles and we'd have prayer for the sobriety pledge or for prayer. So I'm going to ask Gary now to come up and light a, a, an Easter taper from the Christ candle we have here and just hold it on your behalf as I pray a prayer for healing for all of us. Creator God, loving Father, and higher power, source of all that is good. We come to you in our need and in our pain with faith and trust in the power of your spirit to heal us. We pray that our deep desire to heal may be realized, that what is wounded in our lives may be restored to good health, and that we may be receptive to the ways in which healing needs to happen in our lives. Lord, we ask first of all that you fill us with your love, let your spirit of forgiveness flow through us to anyone who has hurt us in any way and deliver us from any anger, resentment, and bitterness that we bear towards those who have hurt us in the past. Help us to understand them and to forgive them and move on with our lives free to love and live life to the full. Heal us of our sinfulness, that which makes us sin, our negative attitudes, painful emotions, defects of character. Deliver us from false pride, stubborn self-will, self-righteousness, our tendency to judge others, to blame, and live in denial of our own painful inner reality. And especially, save us and deliver us from our addictions and any overattachment in our lives to the false gods of money, fame, power, pleasure, and control. Lord, help us to mourn and grieve our losses. Give us the spirit to fill the emptiness left by those losses and deliver us from any sadness, self-pity, and grief that we may still feel. Help us to let go, to give our losses to you, to receive your spirit to make up for those losses and move on with our lives to love and live life to the full. Gracious God, grant that those who are making a pledge to refrain from active addiction for whatever time they may have chosen may have the courage, strength, and perseverance to remain faithful to that pledge and guide them into a more intimate relationship with you through forgiveness and healing. We thank you for hearing our prayer and even now answering it in your own mysterious way in time through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray together that beautiful prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So that brings us just about to a close. We'll just close with the serenity prayer and a closing hymn. But just before, thank you for your participation. Thank you to Matthew, Grand and Media to, for being here, and for Ron and Gary for helping us out, and Ken over there. And um, 
So let us just pray this, the, full, the full serenity prayer. And next year, hopefully, we'll be here in person in Lexington. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us continue to lead lives of happy, free sobriety. And we'll close with a hymn. Ken is going to lead us. Thank you.